Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a basic video for beginners where we're going to be going over prep, sanding, and finishing tumblers. I'm going to show you a very basic one color glitter epoxy tumbler and I'm going to take you from start to finish. Let's get started. All right, you guys, so we're gonna start by prepping our cup. First, I wanna show you my cup arms. I get a lot of questions on these. My cup arms are from the Bowen LLC. You could find them on Etsy, and these are what go with my cup turner that I also got from them. And these cup arms just fit right into my cup here, as you can see. And I'm gonna show you guys how I prep my cups. Normally, I would do this at the sink, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you at my desk. So you just wanna get your cup wet, put a little bit of the final sand product on there. It's like um, a green toothpaste almost. And using a maroon scouring pad, you just scour the whole surface of the cup. Make sure you get the bottom really well too if you're you know, gonna be coating the whole bottom. If you weren't gonna be coating your whole cup, you would tape off the areas like the bottom if you like to tape off the top and bottom before you start prep. Once you get all your surfaces scoured, you're just going to rinse it off completely and dry it as well. And that is it. So it's a one step process for scouring and cleaning the surface of your cup, which is a proper prep for paint and epoxy and all that good stuff. Next, I'm going to spray paint my cup. Usually, I spray paint it the same color as the glitter that I'll be using, and I like to use these paints from Rust-Oleum that are both the paint and primer, so it's just a one-step paint process. And it doesn't matter if you use a gloss or a satin paint. Um, any kind of color that you want to use is great as long as it's a base coat for your glitter. Um, next, I'm using epoxy method to apply my glitter. I go over this on a lot of my videos, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but basically you just use less than one milliliter of epoxy. So typically what I'll do is I'll mix up five milliliters of epoxy in my, epox in my little medicine cup, and I'll just dip my finger in once, and that usually is enough to coat the whole cup. If you're having a hard time spreading the epoxy on for epoxy method glitter, get your cup warm in front of a space heater first, and that's gonna really help you spread your epoxy on evenly. You won't get a lot of lines, and it'll be nice and thin. Too much epoxy will make your glitter look patchy. Too little epoxy, you won't get very good coverage, and you might miss some spots. So getting your cup warm ensures a really nice, even thin coat. I usually let that sit for a couple minutes before I apply the glitter just to make sure that all the lines have smoothed out. And since for this cup, I'm just doing all one color, you could just take your glitter and let it rip over the whole cup. Um, since this is epoxy method, you do want to wait for the glitter to kind of soak into the epoxy a little bit after you initially sprinkle it on and make sure that all surfaces of your cup are completely evenly coated in glitter. And I even will like double check it <laughs> after like 20 minutes just to make sure that I have good coverage because I don't like to go in to do a second coat um, with epoxy method glitter. Okay, um, and then after your glitter is on there, I like to let it sit for two to three hours before we move on into the next step. All right, so now I'm putting my first layer of epoxy on my cup. This first layer for this 12 ounce skinny was about 30 milliliters of epoxy. For my first layer over glitter, it's typically between 30 and 60 milliliters of epoxy. You don't want to put too much, but you also don't want to put too little. Also, don't try to get full coverage on this first coat of glitter. You will almost always have to put a second coat on before you can sand or get it smooth before decals. So just depend on this layer being super not smooth <laughs> and rough and just ride with it knowing that you're going to put that second coat on later. So really... 
The goal here is to just get decent coverage. Don't drag your glitter too much by applying too little, um, but also don't get it too clunky by applying too much. I also like to keep my coats of epoxy pretty conservative because if my cup is off balance in any kind of way and I have a lot of pooling from a really thick coat, that's a lot of sanding and work to get it out. So I like to do conservative coats. It helps keep down on micro bubbles as well. So after I have the whole coat or the whole cup fully coated with epoxy, nice and even, uh, you want to go over the whole cup with a torch. I'm using a TS 4000 torch with camp fuel attached. And this works great for zapping out all of the micro bubbles. You'll also notice I have a really bright light shining right down onto my cup and that's gonna give me a great view to see any kind of bubbles that are being stubborn. It's gonna show me everything in there. <laughs> So after I get this all torched, I'm going to leave this alone and we're going to let it turn for four to six hours. After my cup has turned for four to six hours, we're going to immediately go into a second coat. I will not take it off the turner. I don't clean it. I don't sand it. I don't do anything. I just go directly into that second coat after four to six hours. All right, so it's been four to six hours and we're ready to put on that second coat. I've got 20 milliliters of epoxy here and I'm just going to apply it the same way that I applied the first coat. If you find that you're getting a lot of fish eyes or like divots in your epoxy, there are a lot of things that can cause this. Most often it's something on the surface, like maybe you left some rubbing alcohol on there, there's some debris, or the sealer that you use is like releasing ketones that aren't agreeing with your epoxy and causing it to separate. It could also be humidity. There's just a lot of different things that can cause that. But I think one thing that people overlook is how well you spread that epoxy on over the layer below it. And did you really take the time to fully smooth it over every single surface on the cup to make sure every single spot was covered? Another thing that can cause those fish eyes is micro bubbles that are popping kind of later in the curing process, I think. Um, I'm not an expert or anything, and I've never really had a lot of problems with fish eyes or my epoxy repelling off the surface of the cup. I just know that when my epoxy did repel off the surface of the cup, those were the reasons why, okay? So I let my second coat dry for eight to 12 hours and I'm ready for sanding. I really wanted to focus on sanding in this video since this is something that people seem to ask me about a lot. And I always start with the rim of my cup. I've got an 80 grit sanding block here, and while I'm holding the uh, block at a 45 degree angle, I'm going to sand down a small line of metal at the top of the cup. So what we'll be left with is a thin line of stainless steel around the top. This is what will later be our exposed side of the cup that will adhere the final coat for our final seal, if that makes sense. You'll see what I mean later. <laughs> Um, but anyway, we're just sanding down that fine line around the top and getting all those rough edges off. If you find that you have a lot of rough edges on your cup, do not sand. Go directly into a third coat. Uh, the reason you don't want to sand if you feel a lot of rough edges is you can sand the color off your glitter, which you'll see I actually do that in this video because I I, I guess I should have took my own advice and did a third coat before I went into my sanding, but whatever. I'm also going to show you how to fix that later too. So mainly I'm focusing on that rim, getting that fine line of stainless steel exposed. I'm going to go around the sides and see if there's some minimal sanding around the sides that needs to happen. And then I'm going to go around the bottom rim of the cup and like very carefully sand all the rough edges around the bottom rim of the cup. Again, if you feel like you are risking sanding through down to the glitter at this step, stop what you're doing, rinse off your cup and go straight into a third coat. Do not risk sanding too far down into the paint or all the way down to the stainless steel on this bottom rim you'll want to really kind of be careful with that. I 
Another thing I wanted to mention is the only time I sand between layers that aren't at this, like the only time I'll really sand all the way around the cup, like every surface of the cup, is if my cup has been curing for over 24 hours. The reason why you want to do that is because once your epoxy is like fully cured and it's super, super dry, it's no longer going to be, it. you have to give your next coat something to adhere to. So if your cup's been sitting for longer than a day and you need to put another coat on it, give your whole coat, your whole cup a light sanding. And this is going to ensure that that next coat adheres properly. It's not going to adhere as well to a fully cured coat of epoxy as it would have one that has only cured for maybe four to six hours or in this case, eight to 12 hours. Okay. So keep that in mind. So here you'll see me going around that bottom rim, paying extra attention to make sure that I'm not sanding down too far. It's really easy to do, especially if we're doing this on only the second coat. That's why I would really strongly advise to maybe consider waiting until the third coat to sand, depending on how thick of coverage you got from that second coat. If you feel way too many bumpies and things like that, just go straight into a third coat because way too many times I have ruined a cup sanding down too far at the second coat mark trying to get things done faster where I could have saved myself a lot of time just waiting to do this process until the third coat, okay? So after I've got all my sanding done and everything is pretty smooth, I will rinse my entire cup off at the sink with some warm water and some dish soap and then I will dry it off with some coffee filters and let it really air dry for a good minute or so. You want to make sure that your cup is fully dry, but you also want to make sure that you don't dry your cup off with something that's going to leave a bunch of debris like rubbing alcohol and paper towels. Totally not necessary. Um, in fact, I rarely will wipe my cup down with rubbing alcohol. Um, usually the only time I'm doing that if I have to remove paint or something super sticky, but it's a pretty rare occasion that I will use rubbing alcohol to clean my cup. Okay, and so after I cleaned my cup up, I did notice that I had some silver parts on my glitter where I had sanded down too far. Not a problem. I just grabbed my bucket of Sharpies and I went to work on those silver spots and it turned them right back to the color I wanted and you couldn't even tell. Next, I put my decal on like I normally would. Uh, my motto for putting on decals is always measure twice, cut once. Make sure that decal is on there nice and straight and even. And we were good to go. I absolutely love this vinyl. This is like this frosted gold that I got from the vinyl people. I've got a link for them as well as, as, well as a discount code below in the description box. And if you guys want to use the same design for your decal, you can find it for free in the file section of the Flynn Sisters community group. After you got that on there, if you want to seal your vinyl with like some kind of clear spray sealer, that would be a good idea or like a quick coat or a polycrylic to make sure you don't get any lifting on that metallic vinyl. Uh, I usually do that a lot. And now we're ready to put our final coat on. This coat that I'm applying now is 15 milliliters of epoxy. This third coat is typically between 15 to 20 milliliters of epoxy over the decal depending on the size of my cup. If I've got a lot of decals on there, sometimes I'll do a little bit more epoxy just because it seems to take a little more to cover all of those. This coat or this cup in particular took a total of four coats altogether. All right, and so if after this third coat you notice that your top and bottom rim are still a little bit rough or like the epoxy pulled away from those edges, it's no big deal. Just get your sanding block out and sand down the top and bottom rim a little bit more and apply a fourth coat. That fourth coat will typically be between maybe like 10 to 20 milliliters of epoxy, depending on the size of your cup. And then if after that fourth, 
<laughs> if after that fourth layer of epoxy, you're still finding the rough top and bottom edge, maybe you got to sand and do it again. But typically by that fourth time, it should be good. It's not uncommon though for me to have to go into a fifth coat. So if you do have to do that, don't be discouraged. You know, I tend to do thinner layers of epoxy, so it takes me a little longer to finish out a cup because I'm usually having to do like two or three final coats to really get it nice and smooth, okay? Also, if you want to avoid that from happening, you want to let your epoxy sit up for a little bit before you put it on so that it gives you nicer coverage. So if you mix your epoxy, set a timer for five minutes, let your epoxy sit, come back and apply it, you'll find that you get better coverage. It also helps if you use kind of a thicker viscosity formula. So that's why I like the DIY epoxy artisan brand, just because it is a thicker epoxy and it does give me that good coverage. So I'm not having to do as many coats. All right, you guys. So we're going to let this dry for eight to 12 hours. And then I'm going to take this off the turner and show you guys how I fully finish my cups. All right, and so after our cup is totally smooth and it's had at least eight to 12 hours to dry, we're ready to clean it up. So I'm gonna take my craft knife and I'm gonna scrape along that top rim to clean up any excess epoxy or glitter that might've gotten up there. And we aren't breaking the seal by doing this because we created the seal on the outer rim of the cup with that small line of stainless steel that we created when we did our sanding. Okay, so you can scrape off all the epoxy off the top rim of your cup here. If you got any epoxy off the inside, you would just use the tip of your craft knife to really carefully pop off that bit of epoxy on the inside of your cup, or you can use like the corner of your nail or something. And make sure you kind of really take your time to feel around that you got all of the little bits off of there. And then I take a paper towel and some acetone and I will use that to clean out the inside, any excess paint that might've gotten in there. Um, you guys gotta remember I use the Bowen cup arms so it really seals up the inside kind of. So I don't really get a lot of stuff inside my cups anymore like I used to. That's one of the benefits of using that cup turner system. But if you guys did get some stuff in there, it's really easy to clean out again with just some acetone and a little bit of elbow grease. Sometimes some stuff does get really stuck in there. Um, just be careful not to scrape the inside of your cup with your craft knife if you're using that to pop out any um, little pieces of epoxy that got in there. I spray the inside with some 91% rubbing alcohol to help do a final kind of wipe through and then once that's all clean i take it inside and wash it out with just some dish soap and water dry it up and package and ship it and that is it so i know this was a super basic tutorial i just wanted to do something for people who are just starting out and beginning if you guys haven't seen my how i ship my tumblers video i will Link that in this video in the description box because that will be helpful for you also. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Thank you so much for watching my video and we will see you guys soon on Saturday. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.